Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com. In this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Linux OS ROM based on Android 16 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all data on your phone and let's get started. So first and foremost, please install the Triple Info app from FDroid, which is over here. So let's install the app. For that, it will take only a few seconds. Currently, I don't have the Wi-Fi on, so let me simply install the APK file. The APK file is over here. Let's paste the file onto my phone and I have now got the file. Let's now install the app. Agree to terms and conditions allow, allow all triple info. Settings allow. Zomi has the worst UI of all the phones. I just hate all of these things that we have to wait for 10 seconds after doing any of these tasks. For example, enabling USB debugging or installing any third party app. It's the worst one out there. Anyways, we have now got the app, install the app and go to second tab and verify shown as supported under treble if you could see over here if that's all well and good then your next step is to open this article this could say section on a new tab regarding which gsi to download i'll show you now in just a minute in the meantime you could now get the lineage os rom gsi file from here there are two desks currently the first is the doze off and secondly is the mr ztr let's open both of these in a new tab and i'll show you which one i am using currently you can see both the tabs. So in this section, we only have the ext4 variant and not the erof variant. To get the erof variant from here, you have to then join the support group on Telegram. It's by the developer of those of. But in the case of the ext Mr. ZTR, he has given us both the files, the erof as well as the ext4. So that is why I'm using the build from the Mr. ZTR because we have got the erof build as well. So what exactly is Erof and ext4? It should be here only. The biggest advantage of Erof over ext4 is that Erof is a read only that is optimized for performance reads. System and applications both will work and load faster than ext4. So I always use the Erof version, but it's an R only read only, but it's fine because we get a much faster speed. In this regard, the one from Dozov is only ext4. You'll have to manually convert it to Erof, but in case of the Mr. ZTR, you will having the you could see the erof build is also there so i'm using the erof build the choice is all yours if you're using with going with this one the those off then there are quite a few variants as well as you could see so in this regard this is the arm 64 cpu architecture you may verify from this you could see over here cpu architecture then we have ab ab and b means the same thing which is system as root all of these are explained in this article are shown here you may have a look at the article to explain what all of these mean so a b and b means the system as root and as you could see that is the case here as well enabled then we have the g apps micro g with the least number of g app packages or the vanilla build with no g apps so you may use any one of these but for now i am using this package which is the g apps erof version once you've got it extract the package by 7 zip so let's do that as well the package is over here right click show more option 7 zip extract to lineage os and we will now get the rom file in just a few seconds while that has been going on, our next course of action, okay, let's wait for this to complete. And then we'll move ahead with the next step. The task of this app is now complete. If you want, you remove the app. That's no longer required. And it is now complete. And you could see we have got the IMG file. This will be flashed in the system slot of your phone. Anyways, this is the ROM file. Once we have got it, let's move with the next step, which is now if you are on non-Samsung phone, then refer to step 4A. But if you are on, on Samsung phone, check out the step 4C. I'll show you once again. Both the steps are different. So this is a step 4B. I'll skip this. Step 4C for the Samsung phones. I made a video as well. For now, I'm using a non-Samsung phone. It's a Xiaomi phone. So I'll be using the step 4A. For all the other Android phones, step 4 is fine. For Samsung phone, use the step 4C. With that said, first off, get the Android SDK platform tool from my article. Let's start them onto your PC. You will get the following files as you could see. Okay, just give me a second. These are extra files and you will get the following files. Now, enable USB debugging OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command and OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone. So go to settings about phone and type on build number OS version seven times. Then go back, go to settings, system, dev options and enable OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging from here. On Xiaomi phones, you might get a warning sign. I know it's the worst UI of all. Anyways, check mark of this. I'm aware of all the risk. Then type on OK. And after that, you might get one more prompt. Type on OK or allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let me first do a verification. 
For that, open the CMD window over here. So type in CMD, hit enter. Now type in the command ADP devices and verify you are having an ID. As you can see, we are having this ID. If that's all well and good, now you have to unlock the phone, for which I made a separate video and article as well. So in case of the Pixel, Nothings and OnePlus, simply boot to fast boot and use the command fast boot flashing unlock, you'll get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock boot order and press the power key to confirm. But in case of all the other phones, the steps are given here for Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi, Samsung phones, then Realme, Motorola, Pixel, Real so you may have a look at all of these articles and get the job done. If you have any query, ask me first. Once you unlock the phone, your phone will undergo a wipe, after which it will go to the OS. So please re-enable USB debugging once again. And once that is complete, your next course of action is to transfer the file inside the platform tools. So let's do that as well, which is over here. Copy it, paste it here. Likewise, rename it to something shorter. Let's rename it to GSI and the name becomes GSI.IMG. Moving on, now you have to get the file of VBMeta.IMG from the same firmware, which is there onto your phone. So please have a look at the build number or OS version and then extract the firmware file. So let's talk about for all the OEMs. First off, the Zomi phone. So get the, you would say, fastboot ROM. Extract the fastboot ROM via 7-zip. You will get a tar file. Again, extract it. You will get a few images folder. Let me show you for the sake of reference. I have a Zomi ROM over here. Somewhere it's marble. So let me show you how it looks. This is the one. You could see the same version OS. 2040 VM RNXM, same as over here. In Xiaomi phones, go there, go inside the images folder, then get the file of BP Meta IMG, copy the file, paste the file inside platform tools. Then, in case of the nothing phones, you might get the factory image from their official, not the official, but from the GitHub link. I have the link on my article as well. Go there and inside that, you will get the file of BP Meta. In case of the Pixel phones, you have to use their factory image, extract the factory image and then go to the images folder extract that and then you will get the file of VB meta from here in case of the let's say oneplus realme oppo there will be a payload bin file extract the bin file by firewood enhance just go to this tool payload dumper click on browse choose the file click on open and then extract it via seven via the enhance tool you'll get the file once you've got the file please run for the file inside platform tools as of now both the file of VB meta and the gsi should be there inside the same folder of platform tools once that is done Let's boot the phone to fast boot mode. For that, type in the command of ADB, reboot, boot, loader, and hit the enter key. The phone should now be in the fast boot mode in just a few seconds. And once that is complete, type in the command of fast boot devices and hit the enter key. The we will now verify if the phone is there or not. You could see the ID is given here. If you're not having this ID, then please install the fast boot drivers onto your PC. The link is given in this article as well. You may have a look at this article in the video and install the drivers. When that is done, do a right click on the window icon and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify your phone is shown here under the Android phone section. If that's all well and good, then now first off, let's turn off the Android verified boot by flashing the file of VB Meta IMG. So copy the entire command and paste the command in the CMD window. Hit the enter key. When that is complete, now boot the phone to the fast boot D mode. Type in the command of fast boot. Reboot, fast boot. The phone will now boot to the fast boot D mode in just a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete. This should be only a matter of few seconds. And the fast boot D screen will vary depending on the phone which you are using. In my case, I'm using a Pixel phone. So the fast boot D screen on Poco Zomi phone, the fast boot D is something like this. So it's not a cause of any concern. Now let's first remove the, the product A partition to make space for the GSI ROM. So copy the entire command. And with this, we have removed the product A slot from our phone. Now let's flash the GSI file. Type in the command of fastboot flash partition, which is the system partition, file name, which is gsi.img, and hit enter. The flashing will now start. Take up to around four to five minutes. Okay, in some cases, you might get a warning sign that there's not enough space. If that is happening, then please remove the product B slot as well. For now, if I've only removed the A slot because the file is being flashed in the A slot. But if you remove the A slot, the file is being flashed in the slot B. In that case, there might be some size issue so please remove the b slot as well of product then again flash the file and this time there will be no issue whatsoever with that said the flashing is going on will take only a few more seconds so let's wait for that to complete so guys the flashing is now complete now please do a factory re reset so type in the command fastboot space dash w hit enter it's now complete now type in the command of fastboot 
reboot and hit the enter key. The phone will not boot to the OS, but the first booting will take up some time, around 30, 40 seconds. That's all normal. And let's keep a tab on the boot logo or the boot animation. Okay, all the flashing commands are given here as well. You must simply do a copy paste of flashing the ROM then doing a factory reset. The commands are given here as well. So with that in mind, let's now see the boot logo or the boot animation. And they should not be here anytime soon. And that will signify that we have done the flashing successfully. So let's see, you might get the white screen as well. This is all normal, nothing to worry about. This happens by flashing a GSI ROM. And after this screen, we might see the boot animation or we should see the boot animation. So let's wait for it to complete. And now we should be having the boot animation. Don't touch the screen, that's not required. But you could see we have got the boot animation now. And the booting up was quite fast. Although it's a GApp build, but we are booting up to the OS. For now, I'm skipping the initials. If you want, you may connect to Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the app data. But I'm skipping that. Let's skip this as well. Free of space. Okay, all fine. Accept terms and condition. This may take a few minutes. Skip this for now. Next, dark theme is fine. Just a navigation and hit start. And with this, we are inside the OS. As you might be aware, as of now, Google is yet to release the Android 16 QPI1 source code. So it's using the QPI0 only source code, the Pixel team, as you could see. So you will not get the new UI as of now, until unless Google rolls out the Android 16 QPI1 source code, they are bound to use the 16 QPI0 source code only. And that is why you could see that there is no new UI. That's quite understandable. With that said, we have a few pins for Google Apps because we use the GI packages. You may make the required changes from this page. Tweaks for Qualcomm, Xiaomi settings for Xiaomi phones, Qualcomm settings. We got to the audio camera, mobile network, display sections as well. If you're not sure what all of these are, you may have a look at my article as well. And I've shown you how to fix various GSI issues and fix it if you want. Open this article. And from here, I'll show you how to fix all the bugs and issues with regards to the, you could say 5G, SMS, Bluetooth calls, 90 hertz display, fingerprint, brightness, WhatsApp, double tap to wake, whiteness, Wi-Fi, slider, j headphone jack. All the tweaks are from here only. So you may have a look at those tweaks and then get the job done, rectify the issue. For the audios, telephony settings, IMS to fix 4G issues, camera, debug tweaks, advanced level tweaks. Let's skip that for now. Then apart from that, let's access the settings menu, which should be here at the bottom. Let's open this. And let's first have a look at the display section. Dark theme. Do we have a pure black? Yes, we have a pure black. I just love this theme. Night light, color, contrast, with peak refresh at 120 hertz at all time. This might lead to some more battery drainage, but it's fine because I want the best UI experience at all times. With that said, we also have a tap to sleep. It's working. Double tap to wake. Is currently not working. There might be some features which I have to enable. We'll have a look at that. Okay, just give me a second. The app under Xiaomi settings. Double tap to wake. True. Let me see now. Tap to sleep. It's not working. So it was quite easy to fix the issue. But not an issue. I just had not enabled this tweak. Then let's see the system section. Buttons, advanced restart. Is there or not? It's there. The options are as follows. System recovery and fast boot. Okay, it's fine. System UI should be there as well, but it's not there. Okay, not a major issue. Edge long shot action. I don't use this because this tends to conflict with the back gesture. Still, let me show you once how to use it. Let's say, uh, which one should I use? I'm not quite sure. Recent apps. And you could see it's working well and good. But I currently don't want this. End call, wake device, reorient, click to take partial screenshot. Then in the gestures. Navigation mode, one hand mode, okay, no, nothing fancy gestures as such over here. Triple, you can also access the apps from this section or from the app. Both are the same thing. Triple app or from here. Both will get the job done with ease. Then apart from that, now let's see the wallpaper and style section. And you could change the colors from here or from here. Social light theme as well if required. Then apart from that, icons and status bar. Let's go with rounded, apply, and it's applied. Font size, over four font styles are there. All of them are somewhat similar as before. Then in the lock screen, okay, only one single clock as you might be aware. 
that Linux OS does not have lock screen clocks. Then uh, in the home screen, that you can also enable theme icons and they are implemented. Average size till 6x6, but I use the 5x5, which is the best one. And icon shape, let's go with Pebble and it's applied. You could see the changes are now visible. Likewise, under home settings, notification dots, I want to give it. It's a must for me. Tribuche launcher is the Linux OS launcher only. And that is just about it. Nothing. It's a clean stock UI experience, but it's based on Android 16 QPR 0 because Google has not released the QPR 1 source code. As and when that happens, I'll make a new video. But for now, that's all from this guide. And the UI will be same as before Android 15 based, not the 16 based. So thanks to Google. And with that said, let's round out the video. If you have any query, let me know in the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching this video.